Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Tony Hager is broadcasting from the Ken Craft Midlands Championships this week, so it's just me and Wayne Eric Boyd will be joining us a little later on in the show. I want to welcome you to our first ever year in review here on Global Wrestling News. With help from USA Wrestling's Gary Abbott and the Titan Mercury staff, we put together a list of the top 20 stories of 2015. We start at number 20. A three-time All-American was brave enough to be the first. After a lifelong struggle with his sexuality, 2008 national champ Mike Pasillo made a big announcement. I always knew who Mike Pasillo was. Um, and people always thought they knew who Mike Pasillo was. Um, and I'm the same person. I'm, I haven't changed. Uh, I'm the same guy that's going to crack a joke. I'm the same guy that's going to, you know, mess around with somebody. I'm the, you know, uh, I haven't changed in that aspect. Only thing that's changed is that people know that I'm gay. And, and, ag and again, I, I, my goal here is to get it to a point where people don't have to do this. Coming in at number 19, Flow Wrestling's first feature-length film documenting the decade-long Olympic journey of the legendary Terry Brands. Nothing was going to derail what I had set out to do, except me. One of the top pro league events in U.S. history comes in at number 18. Organized by our own Wayne Boyd, former Hawkeye stars took on the world at Agon 5 in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. In the co-main event, Tony Ramos pinned Olympic gold medalist Henry Cejudo, and then Brent Metcalf and Aaron Pico got a little personal. You want me to wrestle? Let's do the shot. At 17, Ohio State Buckeyes climbed to the top of wrestling's most storied conference, and less than a month later, they captured the first NCAA team title in school history. We knew what we had, uh, they knew, which was equally, if not more important than us knowing, and we just kept believing no matter what happened throughout the season. What well, only happens every four years, and the U.S. made it count. They won eight gold medals at the Pan Am Games in Toronto. I'm excited about the way the guys performed. I'm very proud of them. Uh, they represented our country well. They represented USA Wrestling well and uh, the Greco program for sure. Well, after more than a decade, the World Championships returned stateside in September. And though the U.S. team underperformed, Las Vegas proved to be a great showcase for the sport. The first time we learned of, uh, that we were going to be entrusted with uh, the, the responsibility of hosting what I think is arguably the most important wrestling tournament in the history of our sport. Uh, we had one goal, uh, and it was very simple. That was to provide the most exciting and the best world championship ever hosted in the history of our sport. At number 14, 66-year-old Sherzada Body became the first American to ever win gold in both freestyle and Greco-Roman at the Veteran World Championships in Athens, Greece. Well, stay tuned. The countdown continues. That's after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News, you're in review. All right, welcome back to Global Wrestling News. Our top 20 countdown continues. We pick it back up at number 13 an internationally acclaimed film called Foxcatcher. For more than a decade, director Bennett Miller researched the story of Dave and Mark Schultz and the tragic story of Dave's murder. In 2015, Miller introduced the world to wrestling. This is more than just some piece of metal. It's about what the metal represents, the virtues it requires to attain it. At number 12, the India Pro League brought wrestling stars from around the world to compete in a three-week dual meet this year. The format included six franchise teams and paid athletes more than $3 million in its inaugural season. Among the Americans drafted, female stars Alyssa Lampy and Adeline Gray. Gray would go on to finish with a perfect 7-0 record while leading the Mumbai team to the title just days ago. This was your last match in India. What will you take back? You know, the fans here are awesome. I'm so happy that everybody came out and just so excited to see all these wonderful people excited about wrestling. 
Coming in at number 11, The Stash. Andy Bisek took out defending world champ Roman Blasov and won his second world bronze medal at 75. You know, I got one more big stage to do, the Olympics, and got to be able to put it together for that. I, I believe I'm fully capable, and, uh, you know, I'm going to train like hell to make it and to win. So. Well, after falling short of her goals on a number of occasions, 34-year-old Lee Jane's provisor proved that dedication indeed pays off. Under the bright lights in Las Vegas, she put on the best performance of her international career and brought home a bronze. I, I just really uh, marched to the beat of my own drum. A lot of people would say that 34, you know, your past your prime, your career um, is pretty much over. And um, I really don't believe that. Um, in my locker, it said, um, a Michael Jordan uh, quote, basically like, um, limitations are just illusions, and you set those things upon yourself. But I really put it upon myself, and, and my family supported me. I, I know that Ben will never lie to me, and he told me that I had the ability to do this. And, <laughs> and I believe him, because he is, he is brutally honest sometimes. <laughs> Another highlight from the World Championships comes in at number nine. Former Nebraska star James Green broke onto the international freestyle scene. He pinned his Bulgarian opponent in the third place bout at 70 kilos. Throughout my career, I've had upsets and I've kind of got accustomed to, you know, it's not a good thing. I don't want to get accustomed to it at all, wrestling back with there. It's no fun, but, you know, I've been able to keep my head up and thrive and get it done. So, you know, just got to stay positive and have great coaches in your corner and, you get the job done. Coming in at number eight, a pair of repeat champs. Oklahoma State junior Alex Derringer went undefeated on his way to a second straight title at 165. And heavyweight Nick Kwiatkowski did the same with a 7-6 victory over the always tough Adam Kuhn. I think I'm a lot better this year. I think the second one's tougher. You know, the whole, whole seed that I, mean, I won't say it much, but it's like every time it's like kill or be killed because if you lose, you're going to be killed you know, in the, in the rankings and everything else, which to me, it doesn't matter. This is all that matters. But still, like, you can't run away from that stuff. Like, you still see it and say, like, damn, like, that, that kind of hurts me a little bit. Maybe not other guys, but this one, this, I'm going to enjoy it a lot more. I'm going to enjoy saying I'm a two-time champ. You know, Coach always told me the second one was harder, so I feel like this one, this one feels a lot more special than me, you know, just, just coming back and, you know, going undefeated, you know, and pretty much getting... 90% bonus matches, so I feel like I and moving up too, which made it a lot harder. So I feel like I, you know, I did pretty good this season. Hey, we're just getting started. Stick around. You're watching Global Wrestling News. You're in review. All right, welcome back. Only seven spots remain in our top 20 year in review. We'll continue with Isaiah Martinez. He won a national title at 157 while becoming the first undefeated freshman since Cale Sanderson. Isaiah, you're not the first freshman champion, but you're the first undefeated freshman champion since Cale Sanderson. That's going to be a lot of comparisons that you're going to be facing over the start of your career. Are you ready for this journey? Am I ready for it? I was, I was made ready for it. I've been working at this for 14 years. You know, this is, uh, wrestling is my life, and uh, you know, I don't plan on doing anything else for the rest of my life. I plan on being around it forever. And, uh, you know, as far as comparisons go, you know, we'll get there when, it, when the time comes. Uh, but, you know, if I, can be, if I can stay undefeated, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try my best, and I'm, I'm just going to be ready every bout, every, you know, every match, every second. And, you know, hopefully it'll work out in the end for me. Well, after making the senior world team at 17 years old, fans had long been waiting for Helen Marulis to live up to her potential. And in 2015, it all came together. She became the top 55 kilo wrestler in the world. I was like excited before every match because I knew that the crowd was going to be cheering. And um, just for them to be chanting USA, or I saw you know, a lot of our girls here with their faces painted. And um, I know, you know, every coach that I've ever had uh, since I started wrestling when I was seven is in the stands today. So to, I was just so, so excited. Like, I just couldn't wait to walk through that tunnel and get out on the mat and just wrestle for them. And it, it's just been great to have it here in Las Vegas. We go to number five. Marulis' U.S. teammate Adeline Gray continued her tear through the 75 kilo division. She won her third world gold medal and second straight this September. What would your message be to young girls across the country who, who are wrestling or thinking about wrestling? You know, what do you want to 
inspire out of the young, the youth of uh, the United States of America. I really hope those young girls realize that there are opportunities out there. I thought I was going to go and play four years of college soccer and then go into the working field, and there's nothing wrong with that life. But boys in this country have this opportunity to dream big and be able to look at NBA stars and NFL stars and all of these Olympic medalists out there because there's so many opportunities for those boys to look up to them. And girls don't have that. We have recently had those Serena Williams, and we've had a couple soccer stars here and there. But we really need to show them that it's not just in those mainstream sports. There's opportunities all across the board. USA Wrestling is a great example. My education fully covered. I live and train at the Olympic Training Center. I'm a professional athlete, and I don't think girls know that they have that option, that they can work hard every single day and get to that point. And it's such a, an amazing life I'm living, and I just really want them to realize that that's an option that they can go to school and play a sport. They can go and dedicate themselves really hard and become a world champion at something they never even dreamed of. I want them to have that dream so it starts younger. Coming in coincidentally at number four, the Logie Bear, Logan Stieber. He became the fourth four-time champ in Division I history, joining the likes of Cale Sanderson, Pat Smith, and Kyle Dake on the Mount Rushmore of college wrestling. Logan, we obviously have talked a lot about the four national titles. Now that it's happened, can you just sum up what it does mean to you personally? It's just, um, you know, it's just all the hard work I've done, you know, all the sacrifices that I've made, and, uh, you know, just to uh, complete my dream, you know, complete one part of my dream. And it's just, you know, I can't thank my teammates and my coaches and my family enough. It's just been an unbelievable uh, journey. At number three, the single dual attendance record was shattered yet again as more than 42,000 fans watched the third-ranked Hawkeyes take on and defeat the number one-ranked Cowboys in Kinnick Stadium. I think the biggest message is, is that a program like the University of Iowa that doesn't want for fans is still trying to set the bar higher and higher, and I think that's what's important. I think it's a mentality and it's a commitment to the program from the administration as well, and uh, it jives with what we want to do. We want to get better every day, and we want to have better events every year. Checking in at number two, 19-year-old Ohio State phenom Kyle Snyder. After being pinned in the NCAA Finals, the freshman took over the 97 kilo division and became the youngest world gold medalist in U.S. history. What means more that you're a world champ or that you made history? Um, they both mean, they're both pretty awesome. Um, I, I, I like making history. I want to be known as one of the greatest wrestlers to ever live, and uh, that's what I plan on doing. But. Right now, probably, probably just being the world champ feels good. Our top 20 story of the 2015 year in review is coming up next, plus a one-on-one -on -one with Wayne Boyd. Stay tuned. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, the top spot in our countdown goes to JB, Jordan Burroughs. In 2015, Burroughs cemented his legacy as perhaps the best in U.S. history when he won his third world title in Las Vegas. He was also named the USOC Athlete of the Year. I'm the only company now. It's Burroughs, Smith, and Baumgartner. And, you know, those names are set in a standard amongst themselves. And so when I think of the Mount Rushmore of wrestling, I definitely can say I'm one now. I don't let this for one minute fool me. You got to get back to work, and we really got to get better as a country, both technically and mentally, understanding that, listen, if you really want to be the best, you got to dedicate yourself. And it's not about what you want or about what your family needs. If you're going to wrestle, wrestle. Listen to Bruce. If, you're ain't, if you don't want to wrestle and you just kind of want to do it, stay home. We'll get another guy who really wants to do it. And so, I mean, that's really the perspective that we need to have. And that's not a slight on anyone in USA Wrestling, but we need guys who, who are hungry. We need guys who want to do every single thing right to make sure that they get on the podium. And it's really no guarantees. Someone told me that courage is going from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. And so sometimes you're going to fail, but you only truly fail when you stop trying. And so Tony Ramos, all those guys, you know, they're, they're right there. Ramos did amazing this year. He's wrestling extremely well. Matt Cap has won two matches, which I think was more than he's ever won at one world championship. And so we'll be back. 
what James Green and Kyle Snyder, I think those dudes are they're here to stay, man. They're here to stay. Well, for the final time in 2015, I had a chance to catch up with Wayne Eric Boyd. He talks to us about what happened this year and what's ahead in the world of wrestling. Scott Casper, if I got any better, I'd have to be two people just back from the U.S. Open. But I understand you've got some things you want to talk about. I do, and I'm going to ask you the questions. First and foremost, the 51st Annual Ken Craft Midlands Championships live event going on in Chicago. 53 years. It's an event that's well attended, great teams, great performance. What can you tell us about an event like this in its importance to the sport? Oh, my gosh. The history of that event. I mean, Ken Kraft himself, he's a legend. He coached forever at Northwestern. He started that event back in the 60s, I'm sure. I never had the pleasure of wrestling in it. I was always at the Wilkes on the East Coast. But I think guys like Gable and Kemp lived off of that tournament. And today, I understand you got David Taylor there. Is that true? That is absolutely true. Uh, uh, it's It's guys like David Taylor for me that just – Trip my trigger about this event when you saw so many Olympians and guys like Gable and the Hawkeyes doing so well over the years. It's where a lot of folks either made their name or solidified their names. We've got big guys like uh, uh, NC, NC State's heavyweight that are going to just light up the board. Yeah, this, these guys are great. And that's a, that's a hard check. You know, here we are going into the new year. You get to go out there and test your skills against not just guys that are wrestling at your level, all levels. You'll have some old timers show up there that are still great. Uh, it's a great event. It's great for the sport. And you really get to measure yourself. You know, David Taylor, he just wrestled Kyle Dake at the U.S. Open. Can't help but go back to the U.S. Open, one of the greatest wrestling action events I've ever seen. Talk a little bit about the event itself. It seems like it was pretty low-key in presentation, but the action, you say, some of the best you've ever seen. Talk about that. Well, uh, you know, for the life of me, I don't understand why we don't glamorize our USA wrestling events. Uh, For them, it's a qualifier. They're just trying to organize the right talent to go into the Olympic trials. But that event should have been held at Madison Square Garden. That event could have been held at the Forum. That event could have been 10,000 people in the stands. Because the one thing we lack in this sport is an audience. And the reason we don't have an audience is because we don't glamorize what we're doing. We will put on some of the greatest matches at 57 kilos, 65 kilos, uh, 74 kilos. I mean, how and Perry, what a match. I mean, great stuff. We hadn't seen Perry down at 163 in years. Well, he decided he wasn't big enough for 86 kilos. He drops down and challenges Hal. Had Hal beat. How was too strong, too steady at that weight. But trust me, keep your eye on Chris Perry. And uh, this Howe kid is as tough as they come. Burroughs will have his work cut out for him in April at the Olympic trials. Next topic, Indian Professional Wrestling League, a huge success. Over $3 million was invested in the salaries for the athletes that were featured in this the first year of the league. And there are six teams, by the way, in that league. And we had a superstar emerge from that event. And that, of course, was team captain Adeline Gray of the U.S. She scored tech fall after tech fall, helping her team, Mumbai, uh, to a team victory over Team Haryana. The score there, 7-2. Wayne, this is a very unique opportunity for the world to come together through the sport. We need to be talking to those people in India because they're obviously able to raise large amounts of money. I think you said three million. Three million dollars. Yeah, for an event. I mean, that's like an entire budget for many of our most important organizations here in the United States. So we need to be talking to those people, but I'd be curious to know how many people watched. I would be curious to know what kind of revenue was generated. Was it on TV? Was it streamed? Uh, Because if we don't start making money with our sport, our sport will eventually disappear at an Olympic level. Now, let me, let me make this very clear. We got into Olympic wrestling in 1904. Before that, the Greeks in the original Olympics wrestled. They wrestled naked. Women weren't allowed for many years to even attend. 
But once we got into 1904, we were directed by the Amateur Athletic Union. One of the worst things that ever happened to our sport is people think of us as amateurs, when in fact we're the greatest wrestlers in the world. I could kill Hulk Hogan. I would pin Hulk Hogan in less than two minutes. And his big body, he'd be going, how did the guy do that? And firemen's carry him to his back like he was the bear, and I'd hold him there. Because we're truly the greatest wrestlers in the world. And we shouldn't be called amateurs. So we've been on this amateur task for over a hundred years. And consequently, we don't get any attention. We don't get the media we need. We don't get the money we need. And I'm sick of it. And I'm reaching out to the fans of America. If there's a wrestling event in your area, get off the couch and go. And we will make this sport more popular. We will make it a better activity to watch. You will understand the rules. But we need you to show up. So from now all the way to World Cup in June, let's support wrestling like crazy. America will be the number one country in the world before 2020. And look out in 2016 because we got big surprises coming out of Iowa in April. Final question for you. Is Jordan Burroughs winning another world title the top story of the year, the top moment of your top 10? This year? We're talking 2015? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know. I think I'd put Kyle Snyder in that position. I think him winning was the premier moment. 19-year-old American defeats seasoned Iranian and Russian wrestlers. Yeah, I'm going to throw my hat to Kyle Schneider, although I got all the respect in the world for Jordan Burroughs. Love to see him win another Olympic title in Rio. I think it's a great one. Kyle Snyder, absolutely deserving. Jordan Burroughs as well. But for me, over 42,000 fans attending a stadium event, Grapple on the Gridiron in Iowa City. Your final thoughts? Oh, my goodness. We got to do more of that. Every college in America ought to be thinking that way. I'm going to try to do a classic event at a professional basketball game, maybe L.A. Lakers and uh, Los Angeles Clippers halftime match between Burroughs and Dake at 170 pounds. How's that sound? I love it. Wayne Eric Boyd, always good to see you. Our best to everybody in Los Angeles. My best to that Adeline Gray and Helen Maroulis. Those girls know how to wrestle. Well, that'll do it for this week and for the year. So for our executive producer, Andrew F. Barth, our producer, Wayne Boyd, Thanks for joining us on this very special edition of Global Wrestling News. Tony Hager will be back next week. For all of us, Happy New Year. We'll see you again in 2016.